in the previous lecture I started discussion on the plastic equilibrium in soils and I gave you basic concepts regarding what causes the plastic equilibrium in the uh, soils. Uh, in continuation with where I stopped yesterday and I was discussing about the global state of equilibrium in the soil mass which is normally caused by the uh, natural processes under the action of gravity and we define that as global you know state of uh, plastic equilibrium in the soils. Now, our interest is to understand how the man-made structures develop the state of plastic equilibrium and this is what is known as uh, local plastic equilibrium in soils. So, what we are going to discuss today is a subset of what we discussed yesterday that was for the natural phenomena and now I am going to focus on the mechanisms which cause plastic equilibrium to develop in the soils under uh, local conditions. So, the best way to understand the mechanisms is uh, if I consider a box which is resting on a horizontal surface. Let us say this is made up of perspex, perspex is a plastic sheet which will not offer any friction and this happens to be the top of the box and this is where I am filling up the soil mass. Now, the way sample is created uh, this is by sedimentation process or by very slow packing controlled packing which represents the elastic state. And we have quantified this state as K naught at rest. So, the first mechanism in which the plastic equilibrium state might occur in the soil mass would be if this wall which I define as let us say A B slides out all right this is what is known as sliding failure very common type of a failure where the wall a b would get slid to a finite distance and under this situation what is going to happen this much of strain is caused in the system which I define as delta L. So, this is the first mechanism. Now, what has happened here is the wall has moved out of the backfill. So, as we discussed in the previous lecture, this is going to be a situation which is termed as active earth pressure. All right. Now, at this case or in this situation, what is going to happen is because the soil mass is also moving out, there will be a slip surface which is getting generated and this slip surface gets generated in such a manner that if this is the P A, we define this as active earth pressure that is P A. This angle is going to be 45 plus pi by 2, we have proven this all right. Now, if you take an element somewhere inside the soil mass of the soil and if I denote this as sigma v, sigma h, what has caused this type of a situation is that sigma v happens to be greater than sigma h. All right. So, this theory was given by uh, a guy known as Rankine. and we call it as Rankine earth pressure theory. This was in 1847 I think. 
long long back where what he assumed is that the shear force acting between the element and the hypothetical wall is zero that means for a smooth surface so there is no shear force which is acting between the contact all right there are few assumptions which this guy has made uh, he says that there is a relationship between sigma h and sigma v. Number 2, uh, this is a homogeneous isotropic soil mass. Number 3, uh, this theory is valid for the frictional material that is pure frictional material that means C is tending to 0 which is dry. So, we call this as a non cohesive material. Another condition which he has put over here is that uh, the wall is smooth all right there is no friction getting mobilized on the wall itself because of the backfill and the backfill is horizontal there could be a situation where the backfill could be inclined at an angle of let us say beta. So, this is what we will be studying later on this is the wall angle at 90 degree. So, when this type of state of stress develops where sigma v is greater than sigma h and sigma v delta sigma v remains 0. I hope you can realize that uh, the equation which we derived was sigma 1 equal to sigma 3 uh, 1 plus sin phi over 1 minus sin phi plus 2 c cos phi over 1 minus sin phi. This is okay. So, in this case sigma 1 happens to be sigma v and sigma 3 happens to be sigma h and sigma v is equal to gamma into z. So, that means the equation which I am going to use for active earth pressure would be equal to gamma into z you have to do a bit of manipulation. So, sigma 3 goes on this side which is equal to P a all right this becomes K a minus 2 c root of k a. So, this you can derive very easily. Now, in this case what is going to happen because of the movement of the wall away from the backfill what you will observe is this whole block is going to be under the state of plastic equilibrium. All right. And we have yesterday talked about by using the concepts of Mohr circle, we have shown P1 and P2 and how these slip surfaces are going to be inclined. So, under active condition, you know that this is going to be 45 plus 5 by 2 and this is the equation which I have derived. Now, one of the features of this system would be that there will be always a depression over here because of the movement of the soil mass. So, once the wall moves out, this soil mass being granular would have a tendency to flow out there will be a depression and what happens is that this material would like to get accumulated over here in this triangle meaning thereby active earth pressures are always associated with depressions on the top. And bulging on the lateral side. So, this is the first mechanism of the failure. Now, what I am assuming here is that there is no friction getting mobilized 
on surface AB and the base is also free of friction, a smooth surface. So, there is no friction coming into the picture. The principal stress condition remains maintained because the moment friction gets associated with this, what you will observe in this case is if the backfill had been inclined at an angle of beta, uh, this element would have become like this. And then uh, we would have a sigma v over here, sigma h over here and a shear stress developing over here. So, this is the basic difference between the two situations. This situation we will be handling later on. Now, there could be a second situation where I will save my efforts in drawing this picture again. So, there the movement of the wall is inside because of the state of stress and it may so happen that the wall moves in to let us say A double prime, B double prime. As we saw yesterday, once the wall moves into the backfill, this becomes the PP passive earth pressure. Now, this is the situation where your sigma v is going to be alright. So, this angle is going to be 45 minus 5 by 2, the slip surface. This whole soil mass goes into the state of plastic equilibrium. Rest of the body remains in the elastic state, K0 condition. What happens over here is sigma h is less than sigma h is greater than sigma v. If this is the situation, I can write this term as PP, the passive earth pressure. So, sigma 1 remains equal to passive earth pressure, sigma 3 becomes sigma v over here. You were discussing this thing long back how the reversal is going to take place and this will become sigma z into kp plus 2c root of kp. So, what we have done is by using this simple model, we have derived how the earth pressures develop in the soil mass. Now, this was the discussion which was done by Rankine and there could be another methods of the mechanisms of the development of the earth pressure also. What I may assume is that this point B acts as a hinge. So, what are the characteristics of the hinge? Moment about this point is 0, correct? If the moment about this point is 0, what could be the mode of failure of the system? So, the mode of the failure of the system would be uh, you have A B and this is the backfill. If B is the hinge getting formed, the chances are that there will be a rotation about this point and the wall is going to deflect like this under active earth pressure, clear. So, this is going to be delta L. Normally, the wedge which is getting formed here is defined as AC equal to L and hence the percentage strains which get accumulated in the sample or the material would be delta L by L. Now, in this case what is going to happen? Again the failure plane develops like this at an angle of 45 plus 5 by 2. The soil mass has a tendency to flow out. So, there will be a depression over here. This much volume of the soil mass gets moved out and gets accumulated somewhere here. Typical active earth pressure condition. All right. And I can also assume rather than A, sorry B as the uh, pin formation or a uh, you know a pin joint or the point of rotation. I can also assume the mechanism number 3. So, this is mechanism number 1 of development of earth pressures, number 2 and number 3 would be, you must have studied Sluice gates in hydraulics, so something of that sort. If this is the wall, so 
So point A acts as a hinge. These are assumptions. So if point A acts as a hinge under active earth pressure condition what is going to happen? This is how the failure is going to take place. Wall is moving away from the backfill. There will be a depression like this of the material. So this volume gets accumulated over here. This is the third mechanism of the failure where the hinge formation is taking place at point A. All right. So considering all these types of models, uh, these type of equations have been derived. There is another theory which is proposed by Coulomb. And what we call this as the Coulomb's rigid block wedge theory. So, basically, this theory deals with the free body diagram of the wedge which is getting formed in the plastic equilibrium state, and then by using the concepts of equilibrium, you can solve it. In this part we will be taking up later on. All right. Now, this is of some special interest. If I ask you to draw the pressure variation and suppose if this is the wall of height h and if I consider the z value from top and if the height of the wall is h. So, what you are observing is there are two components in the earth pressure. All right. So, when z is equal to 0, what is the value of the earth pressure? Minus 2 c root k a, correct. So, that means this remains constant all throughout. So, this becomes the surcharge because of the cohesion of the material. And this plus the first component which is a triangular variation you must have done in hydrostatics. So, this is equal to gamma into z and z will become now h multiplied by k a. In short you can analyze this problems very easily. If you have the pressure diagrams you know what is the cg of the application of these forces. So, this will be at h by 2 and this is what is going to be at h by 3. But normally we do not do it like this. So, what we are deciphering from this equation is that the total active earth pressure acting on the wall will have two components. If I club them together, this is how they will look like. Have you come across this type of a pressure distribution somewhere in civil engineering? Where? Beams. So, what is happening here in case of soils? Because of the cohesion which is getting mobilized in the soil mass, there is a tendency for a tension crack to get developed. So, this is the Z naught value which is defined as the depth of tension crack. All right. Any cohesive material, if it is compacted and left on its own, in the due course of time, the active earth pressure develops 
and during that what is going to happen? This much portion of the wall is going to get exposed to the atmosphere because of the development of the tensile stresses. Fine. Now, if I integrate this term to get the capital P A, so this is equal to force per unit length of the cross section, all right. So, this will be equal to 0 to h this term. So, that means I am considering a point somewhere here of finite thickness dh and its length is per unit length let us say 1 meter. So, if you do this exercise what you will be getting is half gamma z h square minus 2 c h root of k a. All right. So, there is something known as a unsupported depth of the cut. So, this will be equal to 2 times z naught and I can prove this now. So, if this is the total force which is acting on the system, I will try to find out when this becomes 0. So, this will be gamma into z into h root of k a will be equal to 4 times C. This is okay. Now, this h is the total height of the wall, and this z which I am considering is equal to the unsupported depth of the cut. So, basically, z will be equal to 4 times C upon gamma into h into root k a. And hope you can realize that this value if I substitute over here as z naught and z naught is the point where the point pressure is 0. So, from this expression I can obtain gamma into z naught into k a equal to 2 c root of k a and hence z naught will be equal to 2 c root of k a upon gamma into k a. This is all right. So, this becomes 2 c upon gamma into this z actually will be what? So, this you are this will be delta z sort of a thing. So, this is all right. Not fine. Yeah. So now, what will happen is this will be uh, h and gamma. Now it's okay. Now this z will not come. So this h will be basically equal to uh, two times z naught. Good that you pointed it out. So now this term will be. It's okay now root k will be 
it cannot be because root k I have cancelled it. This is actually I wanted to write here k a term fine that gets cancelled. So, basically what we have proven from here is that the total depth of the unsupported cut is equal to 2 times the tension crack. So, this concept of tension crack I will be utilizing quite a lot. So, A O is defined as the tension crack. What happens at this time? When the tension crack develops in the soil mass, this much portion of the soil will not be in touch with the wall and this is how the tension crack develops. So, this becomes a crack. And this crack gets prone to accumulation of rainwater. So, what is the message which we have learned from this simple analysis? Two messages, three messages. First thing is if you are dealing with a C5 material as a backfill material, and particularly if cohesion component happens to be very high, clay material, it is prone to develop tension cracks, which is not good for the health of the structure. Why? Number one, you cannot compact the cohesive material as a backfill material. Number two, it will consolidate. Number three, there could be a water accumulation during the rains, fine. Number four, the entire system will settle because of self fate, what we call it as a self fate consolidation, clear. It is not a freely draining system. So, that is the reason normally we avoid using a cohesive material as a backfill material.